All right, welcome back to our animation analysis. And this time for something else, I will be analyzing my own work. <laughs> Kinda. Uh, this is the new trailer for the Star Wars Squadron here. This is the whole thing I'm gonna go through. But this time I wanna just point out what I did and what kind of the work is that you do on a project like that. Because there's some stuff that I worked on and some stuff that I kind of just polished or tweaked. Maybe that is of interest for anybody watching this. And of course, it will also be somewhat of a reaction because come on, it's Star Wars and it's awesome. One of those rare upside down shots. Star Wars usually has a up and a down. Ships don't really turn around. It is not Star Trek, at least the new Jedi Star Treks or any of the space movies that has obviously in space, there's an up and down, but in Star Wars there is. So there's something new. Lots of lots of actions. It's awesome. I love it already. I'm a big fan of uh, Star Wars in general still and flying or flying, animating X-Wings and uh, animating TIE Fighters and all that stuff. It's just so much fun. I don't know who animated this, but I always feel bad when you have that many ships. That's always uh, a pain. You got all the flight paths or however the, the animator animated this. But lots of cool work and it's always kind of need to almost see into the cockpit. But even though it's tiny, you still have to animate the stunt double doing things. That will potentially cross cut. Although this blinking thing here is probably, I don't know if that's the hand to be honest, or this turning on. But well, I'm always a fan of this. And as the franchise has evolved, the uh, VHS or whatever scan line has changed to just some kind of flickering. Yeah, yeah. We got the writing here. We got this here. I'm so pumped for the game. I always wanted to have a Star Wars game in VR. It's awesome. This seems simple, by the way, I didn't animate this, but the constant movement and re-holding of the fingers and just the tightening and the shake on top of that. Hopefully someone did animation layers or we have stacked rigs where we have multiple nodes, but that looks simple, but it's a pain just because it's time consuming to animate fingers like that. The way I did these shots was either keyframe or we got mocap that was then tweaked. Again, I did not uh, shoot this, but just as a as a, you know, like in, I don't know if it's an FYI or something, but if you do those type of shots, sometimes you get mocap and it's not quite working because you have notes or you need to tweak things and you start keyframing these. But if someone is sitting in a cockpit, it's usually not that complicated. You can do this by hand. Love all of this. So good. Reminding you of, uh, if that's the shield, reminding you of Rogue One. Love that helmet still. I know this nothing has animation related here. This is just me commenting on what I'm seeing. Anyway, this is going to take forever. I'm going to fast forward to the things that I did. Although, come on. This is so cool. So cool. I love this. All right. So as this continues, uh, this guy realizes I am being abandoned. And actually, the first shot that I worked on is this. And by worked on, I mean I did almost nothing. <laughs> so we have this gets hit and I remember on this one I tweaked some camera stuff I tweaked position some debris this guy going through and ultimately where this gets hit I think it was a bit lower and then a bigger turn so that the camera has a bit more of as you can see this in the streaks a bit of an out of control feeling so that it matches a bit more of this that is super cool I have to stop this I know it's not animation related but this is super cool I love that close-up I love all this happening and just that refraction, the reflection, the colors, all of this. I think this is a super cool shot. Also kind of showing that in this trailer, the rebels, the technically good guys, are a bit more faceless. We don't really see the eyes. They're not really the uh, the heroes in this trailer. And I think that was the purpose behind this, that we don't really see the eyes in this one. That's why this guy gets the uh, helmet, takes the helmet off. So we can actually identify and kind of Kind of go with this character as we can see the eyes and the other character is just kind of a faceless menace anyway phew, flies off i'm a big fan of this this whole cat and mouse thing with a more slower flying x-wing i think that's pretty cool that's rarely seen they usually fly by fairly fast i'm always a big fan of that that's cool that's so cool with the lights too it's really neat by the way i haven't animated this <laughs> so far <laughs> nothing animated whoever's watching this is going really really but oh, come on love this so love that we're keeping this type of color the engines nothing has strange it's very cool see that we don't see the eyes we don't really want to identify with this Ooh, nicely done here 
And fingers. Ooh, tightening of this. All pain. That's cool. Love that. Love that we can see inside. I'm still a massive fan of the design. X-Wings, the tight deceptors, regular TIE Fighters. Cool stuff. Now, as we are exiting this moment here, it gets closer to what I actually animated and touched. Yes, this is... I can go up here. Wah. This is halfway through and I haven't done much. I can't remember. I don't think I did this, to be honest. After a while, it's also blur of the things that you touched. But I don't think so. That's cool. Nope, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. That's cool. I love how we are switching to... Also, by the way, wait, this is cool. Very, very neat. Also clever, because you have to kind of look at screen direction. Kind of looks right to left. And the other one still kind of disappears right to left. We are flying right to left. And as we want to change direction, now you're going from right to left a little bit to behind. But now we're switching to left and right. Or left to right. Pew, pew, pew. And then, see that? Now we're flying left to right. Even in something like this, you always kind of have to pay attention. Even though it's just one TIE Fighter, one X-Wing, you don't want to keep, um, you know, keep the screen direction clear, not confuse the audience. Again, not that you'd be super confused I and mean, we you know who's who, but just in case. I... This is just the worst animation analysis in history. I don't think I touched this one. I touched so many up towards the end. Not this for sure. This is cool. I love all the little tech here, the display, all of that. So you can really nice look in those old, old school buttons and switch roos. Whenever you see this up close, that's really neat. I hope that this was clear to the audience that he hacked this thing to turn around to then go back and uh, attack the uh, X-Wing. And this one. Oh, wait. I actually, I think I animated the shot. Here we go. This one. Did I do this one? I know this is the best. The best animation analysis. This was fairly recent and I already can't remember. I can't remember if I touched this. I can't remember if I touched this. This, All of these might have been... Uh, the way this works, I came on the show a bit later, and then you know, sometimes you need to do just camera changes. We need to have a, a nicer view of this. Maybe this might have been lower with a bit more of the sky, and it's not clear enough. This, I got mocap, and then it was no good because sometimes you get, you know, you got the, the chair and whatever mocap actor, and then you got these guys, this to hold. Sometimes it's a bit too close, too far, and then it starts to kind of pull arms in this case i left them ik because they want to constrain them to these and sometimes that stuff just gets too weird and you want to adjust to the chair and some adjustment here in the, in the spine and then at the end it just all gets tweaked and it's also short right so if you go back this is very short this is so short that i scrubbed past it oh right, right, way past it so that was a shot that was done by hand but even something short you want to have a little bit on there a little bit of compression on the fingers you can see it's blurry but I tried to put in compression on the thumbs. And you do all this in a certain view to make sure everything is correct, correct there. And then <laughs> it gets out of frame and you can't see it. Sometimes you do work, you think it's going to be awesome. Even if it's detail work, but you can't really see anything. But you also don't want to um, distract from things. You don't have all kinds of hand movements and things. But again, fairly simple. You don't want to overcorrect too much. You also want to make sure that it doesn't keep on moving with the controls. Otherwise, the ship will be in a different position. All that stuff it seems small, but you do want to look at continuity and how, how they move here. That's very cool. That, I don't, what did I do in this one? Basically calming down of the camera. Again, I inherited the shot from someone who did awesome work. And if I say someone, a lot of it has been done by Scott Benzo, who is a beast. A beast. He does so much good work. But I think it was a bit more making sure that it, the camera is really tight and it looks like it is attached to the wing. But not too loose, but still also making sure that all of that is visible. So this would be a typical um, kind of touch-up, polish, fixes, inheriting from someone. Making sure everything's correct to push through renders. Uh, same with this one. This was fairly done in that stage. It was just kind of camera adjustment to making sure that the ship leads the camera, breaking frame. Uh, and adjust any type of roll if you need it. This is a shot that I animated from scratch. So what you do here is that... You basically have assets for um, clouds, however that works. Again, I don't want, I can, you know, divulge secrets and things that we do this. But generally speaking, so I don't get fired, uh, either you have a card, that's a 2D card. Sometimes you have volumetric 
um, smoke, sometimes or clouds, or sometimes you have spheres. However, you can do this so we understand the camera move and the speed of things. And then um, you can put this on a flight path and then we just fly this around. Sometimes the flight path, you don't want to go too crazy with the curve and then the ship does weird stuff. So sometimes you just leave it flying and any type of movement, the way I have it here, it's just animated on the control so that the ship goes off the path Still, the path is there to fly straight for the speed, the miles per hour. But you can just kind of do something where you do that. And then, of course, this is all CG, so you have to do the camera as well. And these are all animated laser blasts. I can say this because there was a making of. This is public. They talked about this. These are called cues. So we anim animate these. We can select the controls and say pew pew. And then it shoots at the same time. And then, of course, because it's Star Wars, you have to make sure that the firing pattern is correct. So for X-Wings, am I shooting here? I am shooting here. It starts here and then it crosses down and then up and then crosses over. It is rare. I believe Episode 6 has only two shots of an X-Wing firing all four at the same time. So even though Star Wars has gone through a couple different versions and looks and more handheld and more classic, we still try to keep things the way they are. With TIE Fighters, it's usually two, sometimes one. These are a bit more all over the place, but we want to keep the X-Wing firing pattern fairly consistent. Same thing here. So CG ship, CG camera, this shot as well. And since it's back to back, it's, I can just plug this in and have those laser blasts come in into this shot. Same thing on the path, flying off the path. Camera adjustment to make sure it's framing, but not too clean. You want the ship to lead and sometimes break frame. But I like this. And then you also, you want to make sure that if you do animate ships like this, and let's see if I have this in here, talking out of my B-U-T-T, -T, is that when they're on a path, what you don't want to do is start translating ships over, either X-Wings or TIE Fighters. They start with a rotation, with the roll. So first it rolls, and that almost pulls the ship over into a translate, and then it would roll, kind of roll, to stop that transit. You will keep translating a little bit, and then it translates back into that. Same thing with this. You can't just suddenly translate the ship over. It would start with a roll. And sometimes it's tricky because the length of the shot, you have to almost do it at the same time. But you do want to try to rotate first, then go into a translate. Even that, with a bit of an arc, not too straight. And then there's still momentum. There's still inertia, and in this case, gravity as well here in the atmosphere and the planet. So as it rolls, you want to overshoot a bit with a slight correction. You can see this. And then you want to make sure that as you stop, that you don't stop here, because that's a weird tangent. So try to keep it so that there's a clear gap here. And then you can overshoot enough. So again, it doesn't overshoot to here, but here. So there's a bit of an overlap for a nice silhouette and so on and so on. So you go back. These are kind of the things that I think about in terms of path and overshoot and keeping weight. And with these guys, I treat these separately as TIE Fighters. To me, TIE Fighters are kind of just the grunts. They just fly around. TIE Interceptors, they're just a bit more specialized. So to me, I don't know if that's, you know, if that's canon, if that's how you're supposed to do it. That's how I approach the ships. This will be a bit faster and a bit more precise. They're a bit more the elite pilots. They can fly a bit more precisely. This, the only thing I touched was this coming down into a clearer view, coming out, making sure this really passes camera. But it's like camera move following this here. Again, this was already done by someone. This was just touch-ups. But that's what you do on a show. This is why I'm doing this animation analysis. This is not to go frame by frame on things. But I mean, I'm going frame by frame. But kind of explaining, if you are on a show, it's not just I do everything and it's mine. But you do things where you inherit a shot. And you have to make sure that you can work within someone else's file. And uh, that was Sims. But you have that general piece that you animate going back. And then... That's one that I did. Camera, I think, was already there, if I remember. But you adjust the camera a little bit, little tiny tweaks. But body uh, motion and face uh, was by hand, and you have you can barely see this. Sometimes it's a, it's a bummer because of the lighting, but it's it's more real. I mean, it's not saying it looks wrong. But you dial in those shapes. You can see those neck shapes as it tightens, and you have to be careful that then it doesn't go through the straps here. Some nostrils, all this kind of stuff you don't quite see, but you want to put in. The flares, you want to start putting in a bit more asymmetry. Not super cartoony, but it is human and organic. So you want to change the shapes just the tad. I put in the slight rotation in that jaw a bit. There I say, I did animate all the eyes. And you can't see it. Yeah, you can't see it. There was a bit of a flare and then a squint. 
And I believe this is one of the first shots that I did and, and I did not know that this is going to be rendered so we don't see the eyes, so it's the faceless adversary. So I put in all the eye animation, then later on I was told, oh, by the way, we don't really see the eyes. But then again, I still would have put something in there because you never know. You never know what you see. You don't want the character to be cross-eyed. You just never know what's going on. I love this though. I love the reflection here. And then you got your compressions. If you do facial stuff like that, you put up the jaw, but then you start going into compression of lips here, compression of that. This will push up the shapes here. This starts to push up the nostrils. And it's not quite visible, but I did put that in there. When you start clenching into this, you get a jaw clench. As that goes in, you have a shape that goes out. And sometimes this is later on when the guy doesn't have the, the helmet on. You have temple, you have clench that the temple goes out. Tiny stuff again, and you might not really see it, but the hope is always that you feel it, that you put in all of this, that you don't just animate jaw closed, but you do really animate all the extra shapes everywhere to make this fleshy and organic. I did not touch this. I did not touch this. It's almost like Batu. Is it Batu? The one from Galaxy's Edge, the planet. Did not touch this. Did I do this? No. Maybe. I did a couple with this. <laughs> I sure remember. They're very uneventful. But it's one of those things where you just put compression on the fingers. And this is why it looks somewhat familiar. Then you want to make sure that because the hands are constrained to this. I think I really did this one. Sorry if I didn't do this and I'm saying I did. To where I animated this. But you want to make sure that generally you don't have the arm. And then you forget that there's a constraint. And then you got the wrist broken you mean you got an arm like this wrist broken because it's attached to this here if that makes sense so as you go forward you're gonna have to detach the constraint or animate on top of that so then you start animating the finger so it's a bit of a tighter grip stuff like that did not do this wow that's cool let's go forward uh no did not do this one but touch this guy this was super simple i think literally the only thing i did was changing the pews in the firing pattern, I believe. Making sure that it goes through. I remember adjusting this, guys. It goes through the cockpit. And maybe, maybe flight pattern on this a bit. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I just want to always make sure that things are clear. And sometimes shots are longer too. I, I can't remember. This one was started already. This was the basic blocking was there of this. But these guys going out. I can't remember if these were simmed at the end. And this being pulled out i didn't do anything on the body animation the only thing that i tweaked here fingers just in case to offset things and making sure that it wraps around so it's not cheated compression thing and then adding all the shapes so the tension kind of tweaking just the face again basic face up was there but just adding ah you can see it the smoke takes it out oh i put all kind of tension shapes in there in here all that you can see the shapes here putting all that in there and then because the, uh, at one point, let me go back here, let me go scroll back. There was the note since we have, bam, a hole is in the window. Well, this ship travels at really fast speed and we wanted to have something where, by we, that's the royal we, we were told that it would be good to, you know, the wind comes in and, and the character gets affected by the winds. At the speed that this TIE fighter, TIE intercept is flying, I mean, he will go, he probably couldn't keep his eyes open. But that's the cinematic conceit. So in here, what I added again, offset. Close the pit. I probably should have that down a little bit, no? Uh, a little offset in this. Shapes. You got all the shapes here. And then getting into a blink. And I think this one had maybe one or two blinks more and start cutting things out. It's not super blinky. But you started to think about, well, what is the wind going to do? And then sim adds the magic and stuff flying around. Again, I did a bunch of those i might have done this i think i did this one i probably did this one and not the one before to be honest because i remember wanting to keep this in here how we frame this so we see it a little bit so you want to keep part of that facial shape in there again this is the reality for production where you might do something uh, like a bigger shot that i did later on and then you do smaller shots like these but just because they're smaller you still got to pay attention is that the same mouth shape as this at the end do we want to frame this a little bit here? Where do we cut this off? Just by the nose, by the just the lips, the chin, stuff like that. You still have to think about, of course, the compression on the fingers and stuff like that. Even if it's short, you want to make sure that all that stuff is in there, even if it's not super readable. This one, I think, again, maybe 
I know I did a lot of firing patterns. So in the in the basic blocking, these were just all fours. Beep, 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 for timing. And I know I went into a bunch of these shots to put in the firing pattern. So I would probably say in this one, firing pattern. Then you start animating by hand. So you know that you want this, you want that to go. You know this is going to cause a reflection in certain lighting elements. You want to put that in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I did this one. One, two, crossover. Yeah, I did this guy in terms of firing pattern. Some adjustment on the ship anim. There wasn't too much time. It's fairly fast and slidey. But sometimes you just have a short shot and you got to cram all that information in. This one I did not do. It's cool to see that up close though. And this is cool. This is what they were talking about where you have the light coming in and then it needs to adjust. The face needs to adjust to the temporary blindness. I think that's pretty cool. It's cool that they put that in there. This one, I adjusted the camera a bit, fly pattern a bit, but again, inherited from the basic block was already there. So this is one of those where you do touch-ups, making sure that it's visible, that you want to make sure that everything is there, not too far apart, but still always there. Same thing with this basic. I think this was just settling the ship in so it doesn't overshoot too much. Again, polish move. This was already done. I think a lot of these towards the end were done by... Uh, Scott Benza, he's a VFX soup, uh, Adam soup, sorry, Adam soup on a lot of Transformers movies. He does on Blue Skull Island, fantastic work. He's one of the best animators at ILM. This guy, I think the hat mo cap that was kind of ridiculous because of the placement. It's just done by hands. And then the lip sync starts early. You want to kind of exaggerate because it's small. I still did the eyes. Beep, beep. And you want to get into the sounds, which I will not turn on here, although maybe. Copyright strike on sound here. War's over. War's over, imp. So even though it's cut off and we animate with handles, so this will continue in the dialogue. But of course, in the edit, it's cut shorter. But I did this. And then this one. This is probably the one that I liked the most. Where I did a lot of... I think, again, we had some mocap, but I blew this all away because I wanted to match it with the head. So head turns, body stuff. Again, this is small and subtle. But I wanted to add the little bumps and all those reactions. Even if you have a bit of a body reaction that there's a little bit of bump in the head, but not too much because we're getting closer to the face. You don't want to move the body around too much. And this was just fun. I like stuff like that when it's really up close facial stuff, key framing, the blinks, the reactions. You know, it's kind of turned away again because of the winds. And then he hears the imp thing. So he wants to look over just a bit and then he has that, all right, well, if you say this, I'm going to concentrate. So I wanted that facial look to be different than this. It's a small shot, but I do think about those things. This is a certain state of mind. This is a certain state of mind. Almost a bit more. I think at one point I had a smile in there and that was kind of nixed, but I wanted to almost like it's a it's a challenge. Like, oh, really? Oh, all right, let's see how this goes. I think that's why I had a smile in there first. But and then goes back into. All right, let's do this. And you get again asymmetry. You dial in all the shapes, the shapes here. There's the jaw clench. You get that kind of out there. And I might have even put in this might be the temple, the temple shape where if you if you clench your jaw, you will notice how this protrudes out. Dialed all that, all those things in. Oh, I think this might have been the second shot I worked on. This was just the camera adjustment to make sure that it goes from low to high. It's like simple stuff. I think this is fairly it. Didn't touch this. Oh, I animated this guy too. Yeah, yeah, compression on these guys. And the same thing on the face squinty stuff and then uh, getting in there and leading with the body this one i did not touch this one i touched mainly placement again this was already there this was i think just camera lowering the path so that the the water path was here i think before that when i got it it was like this again this is super minimal stuff but again i want to do this animation analysis just kind of explain how this works what what do you get as an animator sometimes it's you know bigger things where where i have a lot of fun where it's stuff like this. Ah, oh, big hero shot. I like this. It's real meaty things. And it's a lot of fun to put in those shapes. And then right next to that, you do a shot like this one where you basically just adjust things that you got from someone else. That's cool though. Look at that. That's very cool. Didn't do this. Yeah, they got all the wetness on the window. You got to think about all of that. And I did this. I think again, it was just an adjustment for the camera or making sure that it really goes towards this. I think reducing some of the roll. I can't quite remember. Yeah, yeah, something at the end where he wanted to start. Although, here's a picky thing. This might have been tweaked or me not 
tweaked enough or part of the handles, I can't remember. But if you look at this, right, you got a rotation in this. Technically, there should be more pushing on that controller. Or unless you're saying it's pushing this way. I don't, I'm looking at stuff like that. I didn't do the shot. I'm going to blame someone else. <laughs> uh did not touch this one did not touch this one that's cool though i love how it's losing energy and the nose is up and he got that wiggle that's cool i love that detail whoever animated this thumbs up i love this that's so cool that's also cool i love this when you got the uh the shakiness it starts to stop and go oh and then the same thing in the body realizes all right that's it for me. That's a wrap. <laughs> I am down. Did not do this. I did parts of this, right? I did touch this guy. What did I do? Oh, I think feet and arms or something. External touch-ups. Yeah, I think there was something where you wanted movement as we get there. And not so it doesn't look like the guy is dead. So I think that was it. And a little bit of extra breathing and some movement and some tiny things but not for final this was then taken over by someone else i think again that's I might as well talk about that right sometimes you get shots that have been started by someone and you inherit it and then you make tweaks and then you got to move on to another shot and then someone else going to take the shot and finish it so it's tricky in terms of ownership so that's something that you just have to be conscious about and remember what you did what you touched and what someone else did and then not be a turd and claim that i did everything I think this one I did something. Maybe this one I can't remember. Again, lots of little shots, and then you get crewed onto another show, and then it goes on and blah 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 blah. Bam! Star Wars Squadrons. That's it. Again, not exactly a uh, frame by frame. This is the uh, arc in the line of action. But I wanted to talk about again the shots that I did, stuff that I touched, stuff that I that I finished and not, and kind of talk about the realities of working on a show when you get different types of shots you share shots and you do things on your own maybe that is of interest or not i don't know but might as well post it let me know in the comments if stuff like that is actually interesting maybe i can grab some other shots that are uh, in trailers from other movies that i worked on and dissect kind of the stuff uh that i did all right well that's it if that is of interest to you you know my spiel i do other things than this i don't just do animation analysis i do act analysis and lectures and rig reviews you know that stuff and if you don't know it browse around my channel feel free to check it out and also subscribe if it's something that you like and you don't want to miss my uploads and that is that enough rambling as i am popping through the whole thing here and ooh, ending on my shot i will say ta-ta and uh, see you until my next upload